Hello and welcome to the old podcast. <laughs> I thought I'd do it in the style of Terry Wogan this week because as we said at the end of last week's Comedy Slab podcast, I'm going to go back to my roots with the comedy that we're looking at uh, this week. If you've not caught us before, um, this is the podcast where two geezers get together and discuss a comedy that we've chosen. We get to choose one alternately, uh, we being me, Shane O'Connor, and that good-looking fellow there, Adrian Lacey. Uh, I was wondering where you were pointing. Um, <laughs> oh, not in your direction, that's for sure. Shut up, I'll come and introduce you in a minute. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Right. Maybe there's two no. Adrian Laces and I'm the less good-looking one. Um, yeah. You used the term geezer there, which, of course, yeah. is more a London term, and I was born in London. Uh, yeah, do London, you know where yeah. the uh, the term geezer comes from? It's, uh, is, it, uh, is it Cockney? Is it Cockney? Well, it's kind of been absorbed by that, but it actually goes back hundreds of years. It comes from the word disguise, so it means someone a bit shady. I couldn't possibly comment. Really? Um, yeah. Disguise. Dis- yeah. Gu- disguise. Guys, if you look at the spelling, actually, it does, oh, no, yeah. spelling doesn't work, but the um, the uh, the feel of the word. <laughs> Sound like I don't believe it myself. I'm trying no, to um, summon it's, up. It's sounded less and less plausible as you continue <laughs> to say it. Actually, well, or so. I I believe anything I read uh, on the internet. So uh, that's got to be true. Yes, got to be true. But anyway, but, yes, yeah. So we, on, we choose a, we choose a comedy alternately, don't we? And you got to choose choose one last week. I have to say, an exquisite choice last week. Um, I can't remember um, that quite, far back. What was it? Uh, Garth Marenghi's Dark Place. Oh yes, I thought you and, might. Um, in fact, I had a few comments off mates who said, oh, my favourite thing on the telly from that era, really loved it. I, I, it passed me by, but I'm so glad that we sat down and reviewed it and uh, uh, put it on the slab uh, last week. But I say, inspired choice. I, th- I thought mm. the Walshes this week, I'd choose the Walshes, which was a kind of stalled series um, mm. from Graham Linehan, um, who was half, of course, the writing team of Father Ted. Yes, about an Irish family. This is very Irish comedy. I think it was done in conjunction with RTE, wasn't it? The the, uh, the Irish uh, national broadcaster. Yes. Uh, while we're on that, Delightful Industries, which is part, uh, it's a company of uh, Boom Pictures in association with RTE and BBC. So mm. that's a bit of a mouthful, but yeah. Although I think they've been ejected from the. Um, who did you say they were part of? Uh, Boom Pictures. Yeah, I think they've. Uh, I think they've gone. That's actually Graham Linehan's company, isn't it? Delightful Industries. Oh, right. Okay. Him, him and his missus own it. Um, a quick, a quick look at uh, company's house to find out who the directors were of the company, and it's it's Graham Linehan and Helen Linehan. Um, so they they own it together, and I think it's there just basically as a production company to put his things together, sort of, right. sort of thing. You know, bits and pieces that he's. Um, that he's written. Anyway, she, yeah. So is she in the trade as well. Sorry, just before we move on. Yeah, she's 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 listed as a TV producer. Right. Okay. He's listed as a TV producer and writer. So um, well, listed yeah, like a building. Listed. A little <laughs> she bit can't to the move left. or she's be renovated. Listed. <laughs> <laughs> she has to maintain the same look. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, over the next sort of mm, three quarters of an hour or so, we will uh, we'll pick it apart. We'll put it back together. We'll give it some um, star ratings at the end, and in between all of that, we'll play three clips to give you a flavour of the uh, of the uh, the comedy that we're looking at. As I say, I mean to you, really, first of all, Adrian, because I mean normally if you choose something, you're very kind and say, "Come on, headline." <laughs> would you? What would you what would you say? The Walshes. I mean, this is your first time. I'd, I'd be honest with you, there's only ever three episodes made. Yeah. And, I, and I've only just watched them for pleasure outside of the podcast kind of thing. And I thought, oh, this would be a good one to have a look at. So I'm quite familiar with the work. What, what did you think? What were your first impressions? Well, first impressions were, I'm afraid I'm going to damn with faint praise. Uh, the phrase, something along the lines of uh, mildly amusing, uh, okay. first time. Uh, sorry to be uh, a little bit lacking in fervour but I have to say I did warm to it a bit more with the second view and we usually you know, give these things at least a second uh, run out I think it's only fair when we're making our judgments and um, I, I was starting to see more and some of the subtleties and had um, more respect for the performance, performances and uh, so on so I mean who knows if that tra- trajectory uh, could increase over the uh, uh, you know, a third and fourth viewing. Uh, it's, uh, at least it's going in the right direction. 
it's interesting you mention. No, I kind of, I kind of get what you're saying there. I, I must admit, I was watching it and I thought, I'm not sure that you're going to like this. Mm. Um, I, I didn't think you. And you mentioned the word subtleties, and I think if, if, if I had to give it a criticism straight out of the blocks, it would be that s- subtly it wasn't. I mean, particularly, <laughs> yeah. particularly, the, it's, 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 it's basically the, the Walshes. Obviously, as it's, the name suggests, is about a family. The Walshes. There's the mom, the dad, um, the daughter, and the son. Um, and then some peripheral characters as well, and and the son Rory, I thought was was the least subtle of all of them. It was like really overplayed, wasn't it? This this kind of um, very juvenile twenty five year old, yeah, uh, you know, who still had posters on his wall in his bedroom and all that kind of stuff. I thought I thought that was really kind of it, kind of ruined it a bit for me that character because um, curiously, this this I didn't did you know this all came out of a, a web series. No, uh, do do enlighten me. Sorry, I should have uh, seen that. No, it's it, it's um it's it's only because I I looked up Diet of Worms. Who were the? It's, cause it's quite an unusual thing, isn't it? They're they're a comedy cast, um, and they had done a web series. Mm. Um, they they'd kind of conceived and written this with Graham Linehan, so it was like it was a it was a cast written thing as well. But they'd kind of done some stuff, and it's actually on there. If you go onto their YouTube, if you put Diet of Worms into YouTube, mm. it'll bring up their channel, and you can you can have a look at some of the the stuff that they've done. Um, and they did a they did a series which kind of revolved around the family, and I think the only ca- character or the cast member that was different was the the girl who played um, the Kira? daughter, yeah, Kira mm-hmm. was a different girl. But other than that, same cast and and. It's quite interesting because all of the all if you watch that all of the characters are all kind of quite overblown and you can see how they've really toned it down for TV. Right, so apart, right, so they've all they've reined it in. Apart from the Rory character, which kind of yeah. uh, um, oh, and the Graham character as well, which has got the funny voice, which I think is something that Graham Linehan's quite quite keen on. Um, uh, but yeah, it was like it was interesting to see how they changed the characters for TV. It's interesting to watch that as well, and you would probably see this more than I would because you've worked in TV, and you'd see how different um, a low budget versus a, a proper television shoot is. Mm, mm. Uh, you know, they're like it's like watching a something on the TV and then watching a feature film. They they're like kind of poles apart, aren't they? Yeah, um, and the thing is, yeah, I suppose it's a bit deceptive because it it. it it doesn't have any fancy sets because it's not about that. It's not about being visually impressive and having big explosions and car chases. Um, but even to get that look uh, could be quite expensive and to get the smoothness of sound as well. You um, know, to me, it the, again, it was the subtleties, the word you use, the subtleties, things like hairstyling. Mm. Um, the mother had got a different hairstyle to make her look much older because she, she's actually much younger than the, the age she was playing. Yeah, I thought, and that and the clothes that they wore, and I was amazed. I thought, God, you know, wardrobe makes such a difference to a production. It's it's frightening. It's really scary to see the difference that it makes. Scary, scary. Okay, they were scary clothes. <laughs> Actually, the, the clip- mom's clothes were a bit scary. Yes, let's hear um, audio clip number one. Well, the, the reason I say that is because it kind of leads us nicely into this. Is the first scene, actually, isn't it? I think near enough is the is the um, uh, the first scene. Although I, I did want to talk about the intro as well and see what you what you thought about the the intro. We'll, we'll do that in a set. But mm. um, shall I shall I kick this one off? The yeah, uh, please do. You mentioned the daughter Kira, mm. um, and she's in, she's <laughs> she's trying to have she's trying to have a bath. Um, well, it all becomes apparent exactly what she's trying to do. Um, but it's that the panic from her mother when she she wonders why she's in the bath and the bathroom's dark. In fact, here she comes up the stairs. Oh, I can hear her now. What's the door closed for? This door is closed. Who's in here? Kira? Ma, I'm in the bath. The door's locked. Are you all right, Kira? Yes, I'm all right. Oh, no. no, ma, ma, please just leave me alone. Holy God, are you all right? Is the light broken? 
No, it's working. Mom, I want the light off. What do you want the light off when you're having a bath for? You will drown. I won't drown, Ma. I'm not a puppy. I want your opinion on something. Oh, leave me alone. Oh, shut up. Everyone's got a bum. Now, taste this gravy. No. Go on. No, Ma. I'm trying to pretend I'm in Thailand. Does it need more hot water or more granules? Yeah, not the normal place for a, a gravy tasting when you're trying to <laughs> pretend you're in, was it Thailand? <laughs> Thailand, yeah. Um, I, ha- I had to run the dialogue for myself and I don't think I particularly got cloth ears, but I was trying to make out uh, what the mum said. Um, to, I could hear she said, don't be silly. Da, 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 da. I think we've she got, said, we've, we've all got, got a bum? A, yeah. A bum, yeah. But it took me a, a few goes. I mean... Okay, that's partly the accent. I'm fine once I tune into an accent, or usually fine. But I thought that was a little bit garbled, and there were a couple of other moments like that. In fact, there was one where I just unfortunately couldn't get the line at all. Um, or there, it was just, just one critical word, and I think it's from um, Tony, the Dar. Um, I don't want to sound like a bore. I mean, I certainly wouldn't expect them to ease off on the accents because I love the accent I'm a great fan of the Irish accent um, but I think it's probably the speed uh, of the delivery and I uh, yeah if I was surrounded by those voices all the time I'm sure I would get it I think it's more than that as well though isn't isn't there a isn't there an issue of some of the phrases that they use as well there are there are there are because I thought about this when I was um, and I can't actually think of an example now um, mm. now that we've said it but there was there were kind of phrases that I thought I wondered if you if you weren't Irish or you'd never come into contact with you know Ireland in a particularly major way whether you would know some of the phrases. I always wonder whether it's is it authentic to put those in or is it unfair on audiences who are trying to get a grasp of it. It's a fine line you tread, isn't it? I suppose it is a fine line, and I do wonder whether that limited the popularity of the show in the UK particularly. Um, Maybe Northern Ireland's more across it, or people who um, dare one say, you know, um, move freely across that um, uh, mythical border. Um, don't want to get into too much hot water. Or although you say that, and if you think if you mm. think of the, the 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 broadness of a Northern Irish accent or a Southern Irish accent mm. against I- versus a broad Geordie accent or Liverpool accent. There ain't a lot in it, is there, really? Well, they're all interrelated, but um, I don't know. There is still... uh, Yeah, well, I I wonder... I couldn't see it being a big hit in America without um, a major revoicing. And if it was revoiced, then the point would be lost. I didn't mean mythical border. I I meant... Anyway, let's not get into contentious... uh, waters or I appear to have done so but um, is that the one guarded by unicorns the mythical one <laughs> maybe it is there's a troll there mythical or mystical or mystical contested oh dear anyway I, Tested, no that's not um, <laughs> you'll notice when I was talking about all the accents though I didn't mention Birmingham because obviously everyone can understand that it's, it's practically the Queen's English isn't it sorry I'm just all I'm getting is gibberish uh, what we say <laughs> Gibberish. <laughs> Can I, I wanted to say before we play that clip about the introduction. Mm. Uh, um, did you did you pick up who was singing the the intro tune as well? Neil Hannon from Divine Comedy. Oh, well, I saw on the credits. I wouldn't have picked up by the sound of him. Was wouldn't that you? him singing at the the beginning? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think I think there's there's a relationship there between uh, Neil Hannon and um, because he wrote the he wrote the theme music for Father Ted. Right, yeah, that's coming back to uh, me div- now. Yeah, and they performed it, Divine Comedy performed. Well, Divine Comedy is him, isn't it, really, essentially? But um, So there's obviously that long-standing relationship with uh, Graham Linehan, certainly. Probably the rest of the cast as well, um, with uh, with uh, Neil Hannon. Um, and again, I kind of thought the intro was like all lovely clips of um, Dublin, wasn't it? All different. Oh, yeah, bit, the, the Liffey. Bits and pieces, and mm. then because it kind of comes round to the family, then mm. and they're all out the front of the house, and then Rory's doing his karate poses, and that was the point at which I kind of thought, I think when I first saw it, I was thinking, oh god, no, this is going to be overplayed, isn't it? Now it's a shame, really, because that kind of it was just a bit too far for me. That character was just a bit too too overplayed. 
Uh, certainly big. I mean, the Tony character is, is a, a big character. I kind of accepted, oh, right, that's what we're dealing with. But mm. I suppose that did kind of alienate me a bit because I tend to prefer things... Mm, I'm making some sweeping statement about myself. I'm not sure, sure if I, I would even agree with myself. But um, I, I probably like a bit more realism, not ultra-realism um, all the time, but something a little bit uh, more on a human scale, a normal scale. Um, I do wonder sometimes whether that playing a character big is a... If I, I suspect sometimes, I'm not not even sure it's true here, but... It can be a compensation, can't it, for a script that's not quite as lively as it should be, mm. or something's not quite gelling, and it, it can becomes, be a response to that. Becomes like a kind of physical comedy mm. takeover sort of thing. Mm. There, although again, Graham linhan has got got a, a little bit of history with this. I mean, it's not it's not he's not done it, and you know, a lot of things that he's written, but with um, well. I don't know, has he? Has he always put a Dougal? This, you know, Dougal from Father Ted. He's that mm. to me was Rory. It was that kind of character, wasn't it? You know. Um, oh yes, it did remind me of him. And then I looked him up. Uh, uh, Rory Connolly, who played Rory. People tend to be taking their real first names uh, in this show. Mm. Uh, and I thought I'd seen him in other things, and yet I can't find anything I. Look, for me, out of his, I'm looking at his list of things he's been in. Rental Boys, I've not seen that. Got no. that to look forward to. Uh, obviously, the- <laughs> you, you can get that down your local video shop if you need to. Yeah, well, yeah. Rental, rental Boys, or out out the back of an ice cream van. Um, Burning Wishes, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, Sky Comedy Shorts, Quince. Yeah, I haven't seen any of those, so I can't have seen him in what I thought I'd seen him in. No, it's funny, isn't it? Maybe just one of those one of those faces, or um, perhaps it was the wig. Who knows? Mm. I tell you who I did like. I thought I thought was a bit of a show stealer. Mm. Um, was Owen a guy called Owen Rowe who played Martin, who was the the guy, the older guy wandering about the house. Oh he yes, totally now he friendly. was just, more understated. Maybe that's not a coincidence. Oh, just beautifully understated. I thought. And mm. Maybe yeah. What you're saying, like it was a kind of balance. Oh, well, I know. I'm just wondering whether you liked Martin more as a character because the actor played him a bit smaller in terms of personality size. He yeah. had some dry, almost throwaway lines, and I and it, yeah, I, it was only the second time I got. All oh, right, yes, he's one to watch. Uh, they all seemed to know where he was as well. There was a kind of you as a viewer, you were you kind of you were you were constantly being surprised by them not being surprised. Like there was one point where Tony walked in the head of the household and he sat in the lounge and he gets his paper out and he starts to do the crossword and then he says, You're gonna watch that thing tonight, Martin. <laughs> and he, and then and Martin just pops up from behind the telly, he's fixing the telly. He's yeah. like he's he's just like the the resident handyman, isn't he? He was just like kind of going around fixing like fixing the fridge and, fi- and then in a later episode, he's. I think he ends up being stuck inside a wall cavity um, <laughs> because he, because he was fixing something. But I, yeah, you're right. Understated, and I I love. I thought that worked really well for me. I thought there was um, there was quite a lot of comedy to be had in that. I thought I thought it was uh, it was good stuff. Hey, I didn't realise that if you go to the doctors in in Ireland, it, it costs between forty and sixty euro. Yes, I had to uh, sort of pinch myself. Well, I, I couldn't make sense of that line at first. Then I thought, oh, yes, that's that's it. So probably um, far fewer missed appointments with the GP in Ireland. It's a lot of money, isn't it? For, a, for a, I mean, they were talking about it at one stage over in, in the UK for, what was it, five quid an appointment or something. Yeah. You know, to, like you say, to, to address the missed appointments, but like 40 to 60 euro. Well, he, he said, he said, do you think I got 65 euro? So he was talking about yeah. 65 euro, wasn't he? Which, um, oh. well, that about how much is that now? About 60 quid, is it something? Or? Mm, so, I don't know. Yeah, where, where's the pound plummeted to? It's not far uh, off, is it's it? It's over 50 thought. anyway. So that's a lot of money just for, for one for audience with your GP. Yeah. Uh, and as I, Tony said, his doctor actually charged for parking as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he makes the money. That was yeah. the line I struggled with. I got the punchline, but there were a couple of words lost in that sentence. Um, obviously, you, you don't seem to have uh, struggled in the same way, so it's obviously me. Or it, it helps to have uh, your Irish roots. Yeah, I think I think that's the. I mean, I've got Irish cousins still, and you know, um, you can't, you still you often. say you can't get rid of them. <laughs> well, because no, I've got I had Irish aunties and uncles, but they're yeah. sadly no longer with us. Oh. 
Um, but you know, with cousins, you kind of you speak to them rarely. But when you do, it's, it's like you say, it's that it's that initial. You got to sw- switch the brain over yeah, into yeah. Um, killed air mode in my particular <laughs> case, you know. But uh, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's it's quite interesting the the um, the whole premise of the did you you know the, the the misunderstanding that the the daughter's boyfriend was a doctor. Oh yes. Now I if, thought. See, in another context, wouldn't you think that was a little bit uh, flimsy? Yeah, yeah, I, I would. And that's that. I think that was at the point where I'm thinking, I'm not sure whether Adrian's gonna gonna like this or not because, um, in fact, the episode is actually called Doctor Burger, isn't it? Mm. He, he he works in Doctor Burger, which is a fast food joint, um, and I think it's Rory has a conversation with the dad, and and he says, "What? Well, he says, what do you know about about Kira's boyfriend? Well, I, I, he's a doctor." And he's always mm. talking about how he's going to examine her or something. And you're right. I mean, you kind of think it almost stems out of 1950s comedy, doesn't it? That mm. sort of... That's quite a almost... lot of artistic licence bought by... I mean, who's ever heard of a burger joint called Dr. Burger? Yeah. For one thing. But, of course, if you feel a show is... Uh, its heart is in the right place, and if it's won you over, then uh, you kind of airbrush that. Um, I think you think you're right. You think if if the show is when you and the cast of what it's that you buy off people you like, isn't it? That kind of yeah, the, the the salesman thing, and 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 that's where I was with it, and that's where I thought that you might not be with it, whether you would buy into the, uh, you know, buy into the character. The, the humor was it wasn't. Would you say it was childish? Or is that is that? Well, again, I've, that? I've thought about that because some shows. I think we've we've reviewed a number of shows which could be seen as childish, but again, it's a loaded term because I've noticed, uh, and I would be the same. I can't remember what the show was, but a few weeks ago, or one one week uh, you called a show childish, the next week because and you didn't like that one, and the next week there was a show which I think is every bit as childish, but we forgave it because we both liked it a bit more. So it's something like right. that. So you used a different um, adjective to describe it um yeah i thought i thought it was uh, it was getting close to um uh, using up some of the coincidences uh, budget that i allow every show i cut them some slack and also there was a, the scene in which you or it's really only a cutaway where you see um uh sorry, what's that guy's name again i've dried the boyfriend graham, the- graham. yeah uh, there's too many grahams you see the graham linehan is not him um but graham the character you only see him for about 10 seconds tops at dr burger so if you if you don't cotton on to that you really are a bit lost yes with a major plot point for the entire show not um, sure it needed to be like that either i think i mean you know graham linehan um i mean we talked about father ted hmm. um whether you like or don't like Father Ted, Black Books. I don't know if you have you ever seen Black Books. No, I must do. Uh, which you know, which was some years too late. The, I think it was the first series of that, but again, it, very very well written. The IT crowd, which is again, you're not you're not a fan of because mm. of uh, um, with various reasons. He was he was one of the writing team on Big Train as well. I think with uh, with his oh, I've got a lot of time Arthur for that. Matthews. Yeah. Um, in fact, I was only watching a a big a big train sketch this morning um it was the one with simon pegs he's joined the uh the food company right and they, they stood up and they'd given him a lecture and saying he said um now these cakes are, are selling so well <laughs> Let uh, me guess. he said we think it I'm... might be we think yeah. it might be because that we warm them up before we <laughs> sell them and uh he's like looking around and thinking nobody else has got this and he's and then uh, he says um well you could say that they're selling like hot cakes and rebecca front Takes him down a peg or two and says, "Don't you, nobody likes a smart Alec." <laughs> and then the next scene you see is, 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 I can't remember what it was now. It was something else, but a similar, a similar sort of um, catchphrase. And he's like looking around, and she like looks at him as if to say, "Don't." <laughs> Don't even think that. Yeah, I think I remember that one. Um, but, um, I like the way you. Uh, Think that she wanted to take Simon Pegg down a peg or two. D- down a peg or two, yeah, I realise what I Seem, said. Seems <laughs> appropriate. Um, uh, it must be time for clip number two, particularly as now I've remembered his name's Graham. Uh, well, we and we're talking to... voices as well, because I, I wanted to wanted to see how you felt about that as well. But, yeah, go on. Oh, yeah, well, we'll uh, and, and our listeners will make their own judgment um, uh, 
on, on what they make of uh, Graham's voice here. Um, so uh, Graham is um, going on a date, first date with uh, Kira, coming to the Walsh's house, but uh, doesn't quite know what he's letting himself in for. Hello, Mr. Walsh. Uh, I'm Graham. I'm Kira's friend. Ah, Graham, come on in. Thank come you. on in there. You're very welcome. Thank now. you. Hello. There you are. I'm Tony, Kira's da, and this is me life partner, Martin. Kira's other da. Oh. Hello. Kira told you we were a pair of those, didn't she? She uh, d- didn't mention that. No. Oh, yes. I love Martin with all my heart. Thanks very much, Tony. You don't have a problem with gay stuff, do you, Graham? No. Good. Martin, why don't you tell Graham how we first met? I lived down the road, and I came round to borrow... I can't remember what it was. Um, we got talking, and then Tony found out I was very good with me hands. And it just took off from there. Oh, it was a whisk. That's right. And he whisked me off me feet. Come here, gorgeous. Tony, <laughs> that. <laughs> I'm only messing. <laughs> and that, that's one of the, the traits of Tony all the way through all the three episodes is that he's like a practical joker and, you know, he's a, oh, I'm only messing, I'm only having a laugh, you know, and all that sort of stuff. But mm. here's the $64,000 question, because this is the point when I, you, because we had a conversation, was it last week or the week before? No, it was last week, Garth Marenge. Mm. Um, about uh, Richard Aoardi's, uh Morris Moss voice that oh, he has yeah, to put on. Yeah. Voice. Yeah, and you were saying about how you find that really quite irritating. Yeah. Now, the curious thing, and I said this came out of um, a, a, an online uh, version originally, and the Graham character didn't have the voice. Oh. Which is – now, again, Graham Linehan's got a bit of history with this because in Father Ted, I think he, he had – a priest there who had the most boring voice. I got the most boring <laughs> voice of all the priests and all the... And it was very similar to the Graham thing. And I do wonder whether whether Graham Linehan said to um, the, the guy who played uh, played Graham, um, yeah. Shane Langan, isn't it? Uh, whether he said to Shane, you know, can you can you can you do the voice like that? <laughs> you know, the, the kind of weedy, weasley sort of voice, bit of a yodel. How did it work for you? Uh, well, like most of the performances, as discussed, I could have taken them down easily 20% and not have lost any of the comedy, uh, in my view. Um, it didn't... I don't think it really added to it too much. But I, there's a bit of uh, pain, and arguably there's a lot of pain in, in comedy full stop, but it was quite painful to see him so subservient and... Uh, floundering really um but i know that's the entire point so to, to anyone shouting at their smartphone or computer whatever you're listening on mm. i do I, I know how dumb that can sound but uh it was all um a bit too much a how was it for much. you darling i well i i don't i see it doesn't really grate on me as much i've i've suddenly realized it was only when we had the conversation last week because i said to you how much i like uh, Morris Moss as a, as a character that, that Richard Awadi plays mm. uh, in the IT crowd, and I, I just think it's beautifully executed. But um, whereas you think he should be beautifully executed, <laughs> and, and there's, there's a slight difference. Yeah, um, but the Graham thing, I don't. You see, and again, you know, they'd already kind of done that joke in Father Ted with it. I'm the, I'm the, I tell you, and we have letters and and we know we circulars. They're all rectangular, ass circular, you know, this kind of thing. And he, and he, mm. so I was almost you kind of get acclimatized to that. So it didn't it didn't kind of um, bother me so much. The, the embarrassment of Graham, I loved. I mean, it, it, just after that clip, there's a scene where um, the dad takes him on a tour of the house. <laughs> <laughs> a male bonding exercise, almost. It takes, takes him to the bedroom, and he says, he says, he says, come on, come on, Graham, get on. And he's going, oh, no, thanks, I won't. I won't. My, my, my jacket's a bit grubby. And he went, well, take it off, then. <laughs> <laughs> and he just, it's, like, it's a real showman. See, his face is like, what, where do I go from? Oh, I have to take my jacket off again. And he has to get on the bed with him, and then they have to swap sides. So they clambers over him, and he he tells him about how he's got two mattresses and cut them in half and stuck. 
broken together because he likes a soft hard mattress and his wife likes a soft mattress i mean it's it doesn't didn't it take you back to that kind of meeting the meeting the girlfriend's families that kind of could have been i mean i, I never had anything that excruciating and awful but <laughs> huh. in, in years gone by it's, you know what i mean you, you kind of i kind of related to that Oh, well, I've, but I think that's why I'm feeling the pain so much, because I do relate to it too well. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's the, it's the uh, comedy of... Uh, there's a hint of cruelty about it, or the, uh, yeah, awkwardness uh, cranked up to the max, really. Um, well, I, I, I warmed to the Tony character, because he appears to be... Well, they all seem to have big hearts, really. Um, now I believe it's pronounced. Is it pronounced Niall Gaffney? Yeah, as opposed to Neil. Yeah, so the Irish. Oh, so, some say some say Neil. I don't know. You can you can. I mean, oh, I, reading. I mean, the way that you spell some stuff in Gaelic is just that's a comedy oh, yes. program on its own. Isn't it, really? so. <laughs> well, I'm glad you said that, not me. And um, how does an M and an H ever spell a V? That's what I want to know. But they. <laughs> Well, yeah, and B and H. But hey, yeah. they, I'm sure they look at our letter B and say, well, that's a weird letter. Yeah. Um, oh, that doesn't seem right. But anyway, um, it was the fact that Tony, the character, the dad, he's a, a cabbie, he appears to have... But it's, it's quite amusing that he has no awareness. Like he's lying on a bed inviting a, another bloke to lie down next to him after doing a gag about, you know, this is my life partner, about yeah. Martin, the male... F- Obviously, a male friend. Um, did you think? Uh, did you think that he didn't? He didn't. I because there was part of me that kind of felt that he was doing it on purpose to see how far, you know, to, he knew that he could he could do this, and so, in a way, the character's inhibitions were 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 lessened rather than heightened because he thought, oh well, you know, I've got the whip hand here. I'm in charge. I'm the dad. He's, he's trying to impress me. I can, you know, come on, come and feel the, get on the bed with me and all this sort of stuff. You know, I didn't know whether he was kind of playing with him with that sort of side of it. Do you think or not? I don't know. It's hard to say, but I don't, I don't think he's a, a complex character, shall we say. So I don't, I don't think he's sitting there analysing himself, staying awake late into the night, uh, you know, wondering who he is and, and chewing over various philosophical <laughs> positions. No. I think, I think you he's did. just very immediate. Or didn't you get the sense, though, that he was a different person when his wife wasn't there? I suppose, yes. Although even then he's sort of he's joshing with his wife around. But maybe he reins it in a bit. Yeah, it's like his wife was almost his inner voice, you know, that sort of said, no, you shouldn't. Do. And so because there was only him and Graham there, that, that he could he could take it to the to this next <laughs> to this next level. Um he doesn't have barriers, does he? Quite clearly, as we're going to hear in the next. <laughs> no clip. boundaries. No. Yeah, it, there are there are no kind of um, uh, boundaries to how far he's going to go. Um, should we hear, should we hear the next clip actually? Because um, yes, I mean, I'm, you know, if I had a choice, really, I'd say drop it because this is excruciating in every sense. Uh, <laughs> drop it. <laughs> um, you've given each of the, our clips titles and I, I think we should share with the audience that this one's <laughs> clip number three is called tony's rubbery m&m <laughs> it's a, it certainly is which will become apparent in a second i mean basically we pick the story up where they've they've um they're doing the tour of the house they've done the they've done the the jaunt on the bed um <laughs> and, and tried the bed out for firmness and then he he kind of said i've saved the best till last he said this is <laughs> this is the boy's own um, which is which is essentially just their garage, isn't it? Really. But also, that's an Irish pop group, isn't it? Boys' Own. It, yeah, it? I did. I didn't know whether that was a particular play on play on. It probably wasn't it? actually because it's not that relevant. But yeah, it's 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 like the shed, only it's the it's the garage converted. Yeah, um, it's it's the it's the man cave where all kinds of things happen. Anyway, yeah. So they finally get to the garage. Well, here we are. <laughs> Yes. Graham, this is a bit embarrassing. Y- yes? I have a small... I don't know what you'd call it. An anal event? Uh, s- sorry, sorry, uh, 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 what? 
It's like a rubbery M&M directly behind me scrotum. Ew. Uh. Now, I'm a bit strapped for cash at the moment, so I can't afford to pay you. For, 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 for what? Well, you know. I, I, I re really don't. I just want you to take a look at it. Light is not ideal, so let's just make the best of it. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Kira. 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 <laughs> Kira. See, that's so, where I thought his vo his voice worked well. There, you know, the the pitiful, painful <laughs> cry. <laughs> yes, you could feel his pain um, uh, almost as much as Tony seems to want to share his. Um, and it, if it wasn't obvious by then, uh, Tony sent. Uh, uh, his son out uh, so it's just him with uh, the hapless Graham uh, and a, a medical examination but without the 60 or 65 euros changing hands um, gosh uh, yes well I mean it, that's the point of comedy isn't it you've got to crank things up to 11 or 12 haven't you yeah if you think of your worst first date uh it's unlikely to have involved uh, a rubbery M&M. Uh, you know, <laughs> let's not split hairs, if that's not an inappropriate phrase. But, but, then, but then, yes. <laughs> but I'm then, not sure whether it's hairy. I'm, I'm pretty certain I've never been uh, mistaken for a doctor either because I worked in a, in a burger restaurant, but uh, mm. either. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, um, I, don't, I don't know. It's, it is that you're right. I mean, it's that suspension of disbelief, isn't it? And And... We're fully prepared to do that if we like the feel of what we're seeing. But if you don't, that can be the difference between l loving something and hating something, can't it, I guess? Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, I mean, it didn't seem that the uh, British public took it particularly to their hearts, but I'll get to that in just a moment because I just want to pick up on um, this is a callback to a previous thing, which I've, forgive me, I only spotted on the second viewing um, this is a rewind to uh, earlier in the show. Did you like the bit where it turns out the daughter, Kira, has has disguised her door as if she's in a self-contained flat? She's got a I, door knocker and a door number. A I did well, number. I, I thought he'd done that. Because I, I, he, he said, oh, he said, we just have done that and we leave the post by the door. It seems to do the trick. <laughs> and I oh, couldn't right, figure well. out... I Whether thought that was her done. way of believing she'd had she'd managed to buy her own place or at yeah. least rent her own place. I, um, I read something somewhere, and it was supposed to be. This is all sort of alluding to um, the fact that because the Irish economy is so bad, mm. this is quite a common thing where the the kids can't afford to leave home. Well, that could be the UK as well, couldn't it? Unfortunately, generation rent. Um, of course, the. Uh, Irish economy has gone through um, bigger peaks and troughs in recent years than we have uh, yeah. in the UK. Um, so, yes. Uh, so there's a lot of desperation behind that. Um, what tack were we on previously? Sorry, I've lost my place in my head. Um, I don't, well, I don't know, but I did want to say about the, the, the scene where they're all having dinner. Mm. I th did you? I love that. I thought that was one of the best scenes in it. I thought there was there was the she was very Mrs Doyle. I thought. Do, do you like that, Graham? Is that ticking your box? Is that something that you <laughs> like? Is it? Where she said, "I can do all this. I can do roasts. I can do pork chops. I can do sausages." You know, she was kind of like trying to. That was her moment to impress the um, the boyfriend. Yes, or um, the doctor. She thought he was at that point. As they still <laughs> thought he was a doctor, didn't they? At that point, you're right. But the bit where she, where they said, "Could he pass the gravy?" Oh, that was good. Yes. And in a he mug, drunk of it because <laughs> because he, he said I th I thought it was a drink, <laughs> an onion drink, a beef drink, or a beef drink. Sorry. Beef, yeah. And she said, she said, "Is there even such a thing as a beef drink?" <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else would have kind of glossed over it, <laughs> but because he'd never seen gravy in a mug before, he just mm. assumed that that was his drink, and he drank. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, me, a nice moment. It was that that was on the more subtle side of the scale, wasn't it? Really, I guess mm. it was uh, um, a, a little more understated than some of the other stuff as well. And then there was a a completely straight scene, albeit quite a short one, but it, that was the the tender moment between mother and daughter. Uh, I don't think there's a gag in there. Uh, I'd say it's not a particularly long scene, but it was um, it was all heart, like I think yeah. the show's trying to be, and. 
in many ways succeeded. Um, did you feel that was, did that fit or did it stick out like a sore thumb because it wasn't gaggy and it wasn't big performances? I liked it because I think you said earlier that the family were quite likeable. They were a likeable family. The dad was a likeable guy. Mm. You know, the mom was likeable in her own way. Um, they, they were they were people that you 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 kind of were on side with, and I I I thought that was really nice. It was a really nice change of gear. Interestingly, and it was only because I took the clips off this week, um, I noticed that most of the scenes were about a minute, minute and a half. I think two minutes maximum. Gosh, they were all short, isn't it? They were all quite short scenes, yeah. And I thought I didn't, I didn't, I didn't pick that up from watching the whole thing. But it was only when I came to take clips off and time them, I thought, all oh, right, that was the whole scene there. The you know um, was was a kind of minute, a minute and fifteen, something like that. So um, yeah, I think it was really, it was nice to take a breather, to take a pit stop, wasn't it? And to give some, it, it, to me, it gave some reality to the characters. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think it works overall. Um, I've remembered what I wanted to pick up on, which is uh, yeah. the popularity thing. I mean, there are there are two main factors, uh, although there are numerous factors. Uh, the, the more you sort of um, fan out from the heart of a show, uh, including reviews, which these days could be professional reviewers, and of course uh, our old friends, uh, online reviewers, um, below the line, as it were. Mm. Um, but uh, Graham Linehan tweeted uh, when the series uh, wasn't recommissioned, and uh, as you said, there were only three episodes, which is extremely unusual. Yeah. Um, I think they pulled the plug on it, didn't they? I think the BBC did. Yeah. Um, but I, I was trying to see if RTE had any more that they were running, but the point was Graham Linehan's um, beef with the Beeb was that they hadn't got behind it in effect um, they showed they showed it on bbc4 mm. and then they reran it they said because they, they he'd said you know what are you doing we've only made three of these it's ridiculous um, because it was originally destined for itv oh right. um, which which i don't know what that does to your theory about or <laughs> well not your theory but um is it um Lee? Stuart the Lee, the yes. failed state of TV channels, yeah, which you probably still don't find any more amusing than you did. But I just, really, I like that. Not. But it is only a joke. I mean, ITV does some great stuff and all channels do some good stuff and some pretty lousy stuff usually. But but so, so they actually did, didn't pick it up for whatever reason or didn't want to. I don't know what the, the story was there. Mm. BBC took it, put it on BBC4. Um, and I don't think you got very good ratings. And then they said, oh, OK, we'll give it a rerun on BBC Two. And I think Graham Linham was, was miffed about the fact that he said that they didn't, they didn't bother to advertise it at all, did they? That, yeah, that's what he was saying on, on Twitter. And that's the other factors. It's all very well saying, oh, there's, uh, there's no audience for it. But actually, a TV channel has a big uh, part in whether there is an audience for something or not as as to whether they get behind it in terms of promotion so it's mm. not just a neutral thing you can't sit there neutrally and say uh oh well, we'll let it do its own thing i mean i i remember being drawn into the office years ago by the trailers i thought oh i'm interested in that they were quite strong trailers but it was a yeah. strong show yeah um but if i hadn't seen the trailer if they hadn't bothered to make a trailer or hadn't aired it as often Chances are I, w I wouldn't have seen it at all. I wouldn't it's, have watched it. The problem is with the BBC again. It's never been flavour of the month, has it? I think if it, if it was a black family set in South London, it would have gone. <laughs> no, I think it, it would. It would have gone. You know, but but it's never been hip or vogue, despite the fact the amount of Irish immigrants that are in this country mm. um, to to celebrate the you know the heritage or culture like they do with with other. Um, uh, migrant families that have come to this country, and I, I've always, you know, but I mean, obviously, I'm biased because I've, you know, been the son of an immigrant myself. I kind of, you do notice these things, but I think it's just, it's just one of those sad things. It's never been, it's never been flavour of the month. It's never been hip. It's never been um, the, you know, the thing to do to uh, make yourself look good. Which I think, you know, a lot of the time, sadly, with with commissioning, I think it's. You know, people trying to impress the people further up the chain is is what it's all about, and 
you know, and us poor viewers just get caught up, <laughs> caught, caught up in the uh, the maelstrom of all that, really. But um, yeah, well, that's, that's not, how I see it. Anyway. Not quite that straightforward, because you'd have to say, well, how do you account for the success of Father Ted? Obviously, it's not a domestic, not a normal domestic setup, Father Ted. Uh, it's normal but, but don't if you're forget, a Father Ted was massive in Ireland before it was ever big here. He was massive mm. on R- RTE in in, um, and it was Channel Four, wasn't it? I think that that took that. Yes. Um, but but I mean that was that was a proven beast, it, a bit more like Mrs. Brown's Boys with the BBC. Mm. Uh, um, is is it Mrs. Brown's Boys? Is that what it's called? I can't. Yeah. I can't, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, was was a proven animal before it before it ever hit these shores kind of thing. So it's kind of different, really, in a way, I suppose, isn't it? Uh, yeah, well, it's a very different show. I mean, do you think it would have made much difference if there had been a run of six? Oh, see, I've watched all three, um, and I don't know whether that would have saved it. I think that's a good question. I don't, mm. I don't, think, I don't think it would have made a difference. I think they'd have just had one series out of it, really. What I'm really shocked at, um, and I remember having a Twitter conversation um, with, Alan, you know, Alan Davis, who... Um, mm, really? who yeah, who... Um, Jonathan Creek, wasn't he, was his big thing. Yeah. And I, he did a series, maybe we can review it one of the times, I might throw it in the mix. He did, he did a series about a chef called White. Have you seen, did you ever see that? No. Fabulous writing. He wrote it, he conceived it and wrote it, and it was blooming brilliant it was really good and i said to i said to him on twitter when i had a conversation i said white what and he said you know i can't get it recommissioned for love no money he said i've written another series Mm. and i I hear the other day the first series is now going to america and he's actually doing it over there now i think or um you know he's certainly uh, making it happen in the u.s what i can't get my point is what i can't get is that why the walsh's hasn't been picked up by dave or channel four or somebody mm. you know it's not it's not as if you 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 know it's more fragmented than it's ever been isn't it the industry now really and you kind of think you know it wouldn't be expensive to make um sky even sky have nicked stuff from under the bbc's nose before now and you kind of think i don't i don't know why why is nobody i don't know somebody's seeing something maybe maybe it is that simplistic nature that you first talked about that they that people don't like and it worries them I don't know. What well, the the very ordinariness of it, in a way, the over the overplayed nature mm. of it. I mean, because I mean, mm. the thing is now is that you're a bit you're a bit stymied, aren't you? Because if you were Sky, what would you do? Make three episodes to yeah. complete the series. Yeah, it is a, a, a curate's egg uh, in terms of numbers. <sighs> you, you but it, you're sounding as though you believe. Well, uh, let me clarify. Do you believe it could be really big with with the following win, all the promotion, full series, all of that, interviews, trailers, the works? Do you, do you think it has a potential to be say, a really big mainstream hit like Mrs. Brown's Boys? Um, ugh, I don't know. I mean, I'm. Uh, We'll discuss my theory about Mrs. Brown's boys on another yeah, episode. Yeah, I, I know. It doesn't uh, sound like you're the number one friend, but I'm, t- I'm using that merely as an illustration for popularity. Uh, I don't... I don't <laughs> see, because if you, to me, I think it's got the the ability to be as, as big or as good as something like the IT crowd or Father Ted. Mm. Um, maybe not Father... Maybe Father Ted is a bit bigger. Um, but... Mrs. Brown's boys will all be more always be more populist, mm. but I don't necessarily see that as better than Father Ted or the IT crowd, as it were. Do you know what I mean? So I think they're 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 almost cross purposes. I don't I don't think it'd be ever that big, no. Right. But I think it it'd be successful in its own right, and I think it'd stand on its own two feet if mm. um, if it was given that kind of backing. Do what what do you think? Do you think it would or not? I don't know. I just uh, it comes back to the sort of thing you touched on. Maybe there's a, a, an, an odd thing in the UK about Irish culture, which is somewhere between. It's both. This is only a sort of off the top of my head, uh, and this is self contradictory. But you know, is it in some ways too ordinary, and some and other ways too exotic? We don't quite understand Irish culture. It's adjacent. And it's an adjacent country, but it's not quite adjacent. I, I don't know. Uh, if you think if you think of other 
if you think of other um, immigrant cultures in this country, it is the the least talked about, bothered about, discussed, um, any interest taken in. Do you know what I mean? It's it, to me, it's it's at the very bottom of the pecking order in that sense. I think you you're more likely to. Um, talk about um, uh, cultures from India or Pakistan um, or the Caribbean or Africa. Than you and that's just, that is always the way. It's like I always get frustrated because we never in this country get news from South America, or very rarely, unless like one of the countries drops off the continent. Mm. You, you know what I mean? And I kind of think I would like to know the world news. We we kind of focus on Europe, Africa. America hmm. and and anything else under that is on the fringes and the periphery. I don't I don't know. It's this is the thing, this is the problem with mainstream media, isn't it? Is that they dictate largely what is put in front of people. And I think that's I think the Irish culture just suffers from that, is that it's just not put in front of people very often. Yeah, I don't quite feel that because personally, um Irish culture, and as I know, I realise I'm ignorant of many things, but I, I'm I really feel warm to it, and uh, I've only been a, a, a couple of times, but um, I, I had a really warm welcome, and I just I love the sound of the accent, and it's kind of no and so near and so far, um, but but, 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 but maybe like that say, is the. Sorry. Sorry, I was just going to say, if you were to draw a, a, um, a, a pie chart of on TV representation of those cultures that I've just talked about versus Irish culture, mm. I think it would be a very small slice of the pie. Is what I'm saying is, is I'm not saying that you know people don't warm to it when it's presented to them, but it's just the mainstream media never presents it to them or very rarely presents it to them. Mm. Uh, and uh, you know i don't know it's um or, or not as much as it does with other cultures that's the yeah well i think we're we're awash with american culture but i mean that's a whole other show probably a completely different podcast but um yeah that just finds its way to us and that won't be lessened by the fact i mean you mentioned youtube for the original um uh walsh's uh incarnation mm. of course youtube you know, it's an American corporation uh, owned by Google. So yeah. America's, you know, culturally, it never undersells itself anyway. And then on top of that, they're in control of the major portals of of new media. So um, that's that's the frightening bit, isn't it? Mm, really, that's the mm. that's the whole thing. That that's my whole mainstream media problem and hang up that I have. But yeah, you're right. That's another conversation for another day. Can I give a, a, a shout out to fellow Brummy, uh, the producer of the show, Richard Bowden? Oh well, I was going to name drop there, but um, because you, you work with him, haven't you? Surely I have. Um, but yeah, when I say that, I worked on a show with a hundred other people, so uh, he's not name dropping me as he sits down to a fashionable um, dinner party in North London somewhere. And um, says, "Right, right, who wants the potatoes? <laughs> Who's got the gravy? <laughs> yeah, it's in the mug. Oh, I thought it was a soup." <laughs> Who was anyway, it? Black Adder goes forth. You worked on. Uh, yes, and, and and I was trying to um, do a sneaky look up. My re- recollection is he directed that rather than produced it, unless he did both. Um, but uh, yes, very calm presence. I remember, um, and yeah, I don't, I don't remember any. It was a very happy ship actually. That particular show I worked on all of those, but I can't claim to know mr bowden very well but i'd have a lot of respect of, uh, uh, for him just on the basis that you know he worked on black adder that can't be bad can it pretty cool i think pretty cool anyway listen time has beaten us oh oh flagellating clocks <laughs> is all i can say <laughs> be careful, be careful how you say that. <laughs> oh, I do. it is your turn and oh. your time to uh, to hit the old star rating oh, gosh. and uh, and give the walshes while you do that let me while you have a quick codge on that, mm. uh, let me just tell people that I put a link into the, as Adrian rightly said, the Walsh's. If you want to catch up with it, mm. um, you can do that on the Diet of Worms channel on YouTube, uh, written and created by Graham Linehan and uh, Diet of Worms. Do you know what Diet of Worms is, by the way? I well, I remember up. it from history, but I'd have to. Yeah, I, again, I was sneakily trying to look at it while you went noticing what i was doing it's uh, presumably you pronounce it diet of worms wouldn't you because uh, worms or, or is even diet. yeah it's a, a german G- german town yeah. yeah 
where, where are you from? From wombs? <laughs> uh, and a diet is a kind of uh, a, a debating... Um, conference type thing, Conference, was it? yeah. I was suppose, it all to do with yeah. Martin Luther? Or That's it. Protestantism. Yeah, that's, it, yeah, that's a vague... Yeah. Yes, shadow. After that, that I can't tell anymore because I kind of fell asleep and hit my head on the computer. <laughs> but it's a cheeky name. I quite like it. It's like um, I went to see a performer once back in the 80s and, and he called himself uh, Lumiere and Son. <laughs> and if you've seen a Sonne Lumiere, it was a pun on that. It's quite nice. Clever, clever. But a clever. Um, right. Yeah, direct, um, directed by Graham Linhen, produced by uh, Richard Bowden and um, the production company you mentioned earlier. Oh, Delightful Industries. Delightful Industries, yes. yes. Graham uh, uh, Out of Boom Pictures, or perhaps not, as you were suggesting earlier. Yeah, I think, I think they might have been booted out of that or gone their separate ways or whatever, I don't know. But it, they mm. don't appear to be with them anymore. Yes. Anyway, come and on. So, and some money from RTE and the BBC. Right, OK. Um, come on. Well, come on. I'm, I'm trusting my subconscious a bit more. I get an instant rating in my head, uh, which actually, I, I, yeah, I think I can trust now because if I, if I codge too long, I overthink yeah. it. So um, what popped into my head immediately, actually, was I didn't need codge time. Uh, no cogitation required. Three stars. Oh. So not bowled over, but a respectable vote and it could even go up if i watched episodes two and three you never know okay i uh i'm not going to go much more ahead of you i'll give it three and a half oh so you might thought you might lean up towards a four no three and a half three and a half i think uh i don't like you i'd have to see more mm. um but i kind of get the impression if i saw more it would go up to yeah a four at least but uh yeah three and a half so six and a half for the walshes uh mm. and it's time for you to set the homework for me for next week i'm gonna hold my breath <gasps> <laughs> don't hold it for too long uh so it's a guy we actually referenced a uh, few comedy slabs ago uh and you could probably narrow it down to one of two names if i tell you it's a right-wing stand-up comic we mentioned two guys in that category, and there ain't that many. I'd struggle to men- name any others knowingly, because it's a very left of centre culture comedy it's, in the it's, UK. It's um, what's his name? Uh, Lawrence. What's his name? Uh, no, nah, you've gone for the wrong one. I'm afraid. I went so for the who's wrong the one. other one? Who's the other one? Do you remember? Can't remember who the other one was. He actually acknowledged a tweet of mine. I think, bless him. Uh, I tweeted him because I, I, I was promoting the comedy slab uh that edition that we'd mentioned him in I, and i said in, in a tweet i said uh honorable mentions for lawrence da, 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 and jeff norcott okay in question. I, now i don't know i don't know that name i don't know uh, oh no i mentioned him and yeah i'd forgotten that because uh, i you, mentioned you what's his name what's the guy is andrew lawrence is it Oh, that sounds right. I haven't got it in front of me. Andrew Lawrence, I think he's the yeah. other guy. It turned yeah. out I did know him. I, I said at the time I didn't know him. I just didn't know his politics. And I'd seen uh, not a big show, not a full show of his. I, I think probably a 10-minute slot on uh, Live at the Apollo or something. Uh, quite enjoyed him. He's quirky. He's a bit different, to say the least. Anyway, um, Jeff Norcott. Uh, the show is uh, a BBC Radio 4 show, still, as we speak, available on... Uh, we must now say the Sounds app, which they're pushing oh, heavily. I can't keep yeah. up with these lads, I'll tell you. None no, of them. Well, actually, it, I, I, I hope Auntie isn't listening, but uh, the Sounds app, I'm sure it will have full functionality, but it ain't there yet, and I don't right. think it's going to be there until next year. So between you and me, I'd listen on iPlayer Radio, because otherwise it resets to the top of the show. It doesn't remember where you've got up to. Oh, okay. It doesn't is it still there, share it? The, the iPlayer Radio? Still yeah, it's still, still going. Oh, okay. and, oh and that's they, all right, then. They'll have it. Gone, yeah. Yeah, they'll have it till the new year. And what's the show called? Uh, it's Jeff Norcott, right-leaning but well-meaning, which, as he <laughs> says in the show, is he overheard, uh, allegedly, from one of his audience members, uh, explain to another uh, uh, audience member, or, or you know, someone who's seen him previously was explaining to somebody who hadn't seen him. He's okay. right-leaning, but he's well-meaning. <laughs> okay. I think that was up at Edinburgh, I think he says. He's, it's in the top of the show. Okay. Uh, anyway, so that's uh, BBC Radio 4, and uh, uh, it just says in the first uh, sentence or two, he's working class. He had two disabled parents. He votes Tory and voted Leave. How did he end up as a comedian? Uh, that's the question posed. Uh, got an episode? 
Uh, I, I think that is one of one, actually, because it's oh, okay. in a bigger series, which is, uh, oh, they're called stand-up specials. So it's, it's a one-off special for cool. Jeff Norcott. Although you will find him in other things. Uh, he's been on everything from Live at the Apollo, just uh, mentioned in the other connection, and uh, Question Time, uh, although not playing so much for laughs there. As you wouldn't, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Might brighten it up a bit. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I'm looking forward to that. And Jeff Norcott, um, what was it? Right leaning. Right leaning, but, but well meaning. But well meaning. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be well, discussing next week whether that could be applied to your good self. Oh, well, I'm I not see. going to open that diet of worms this week. All right. All right. Uh, if you've enjoyed this podcast, thank you so much for taking the time to listen. Uh, there'll be another one next time round, as you uh, as you no doubt gathered. In the meantime, if you want to have a look at the back catalogue, you can do that. Lots of places to do it online. Uh, all the usual podcast places like Stitcher and Spreaker, um, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, I Heart Radio, You Heart Radio, I Heart Radio. <laughs> we all, all Heart thing. Radio. <laughs> Uh, and of course uh, on YouTube as well with like a visual graphic thing going on there as well and there are also social uh, media outlets Uh, we are at Comedy Slab no surprises there on Twitter and uh, on Facebook Uh, so till the next time if anybody uh, confuses you for a doctor (laughs) and you could hear their belt buckle rattle that's the time (laughs) It's the time to turn round. <laughs> and, to... and also, uh, apologies to M and M's. We don't mean to dent your sales <laughs> or ruin your enjoyment of them. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, you've got your mug of gravy. I've got mine. So uh, <laughs> cheers, cheers, everybody. Clink.